And Nick's like, no, 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 no. You can start with that. That slide part. And we're going to go right into a chorus with no vocals. I was like, oh, I know what you're doing. Oh my God, that's so good. <laughs> and then the drums come in and then the drums go out and then you start singing. I was like, dude, <laughs> you're just rolling out the red carpet for the vocal. Like, well, who thinks of that? <laughs> hey, this is Russ and Ryan from AMS. We had the chance to sit here today with Ian Thornley and Dave McMillan from Big Rec. It was a great time. Feel free to like and subscribe. You can ring the bell for notifications in the future if you'd like to be notified of future videos. Enjoy. Dave, Ian, thank you for being here today, man. It's a pleasure to have you guys. And we want to start things off by just giving you the obvious. We are huge fans, as you know, nice. uh, of the band. It just continues to seem like your level of musicianship, your level of songwriting continues to be so strong. You haven't felt stale with, uh, okay, we've, we've heard that before. I mean, t thank you. But to that, I think, I think what's one of the things that's contributed to, to us being allowed to do that is because we've never had a, a huge smash, you know? Like we kicked up a little dust in the late 70s, at the late 70s. Wow, even that, the late <laughs> it's 90s, been a while. It's been a while. It's really, we kicked up a little dust in the late great. 90s with... Uh, <laughs> and count. you smell fantastic. I don't think that they could pick that up, but it's um, yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, in the late 90s, we kicked up a little dust with the Oath and stuff like mm -hmm. that, which is kind of an oddball song at the time, I think. Things were moving into more of a, like, the new metal-y kind of... Yeah. And, and it, you know, we're just sort of doing whatever it was that we liked, and then uh, the next record, Flop. Um, and it, so it just kind of... We've always been able to sort of operate underneath the radar, and, you know, our fans luckily come with us. There really is nothing that you, you guys don't bring to the table. There's some, it's so varied. Mm. Is there anything that's never made it on a record like that's too oh, one yeah. way or the other? All the time. Yeah. Is not it to because of me. It's like Zappa no, and Eddie Van Halen. Like, hey, man, yeah. Sorry. That's it's, always, it's always like somebody else will say it and I'll be like, what? What? <laughs> what? Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's not going to work. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. It's just like something is just a bridge too far. <laughs> oh, I'd love to hear that. It happens all the time. Yeah, it happens <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who gets to tell to mind. And, and I'm do, you, not, do you tell them that or is it something like I'm not telling them I mean well no, sometimes everybody shoots it straight <laughs> yeah. I think yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope I, I'm not like it's I've really never awkward been, now I've never been that kind of guy I, I, I'm i just like the best idea is the one that wins I you know mm -hmm. you just know it when it happens you're like a saying too don't you it's like the, the, the only thing. ego in the room yeah. is the song the song yeah. should have the biggest ego in the room yeah. Yeah. and I st I still agree with that and yeah. it's like we we will butt heads over certain things because we believe strongly that it's one way or the other, and sometimes we disagree on what that song is telling us it needs. Yep. You know? Yep, and yep. that's just based on what you grew up listening to, your taste, your, your aesthetic, like what you hear, you know. And everybody, you are what you eat, so everybody hears stuff differently. And then it's really not about ego. It's just about trying things and just, you know, I've had to make adjustments. And not that, in the not so distant past, like um, where I'm just like, okay, I can try to get used to that. Right. If everybody else is high fiving and saying this is great, they'd right. be like, okay, we don't need the bridge. You're going with it. That's a tough thing to do. I mean, a between being prolific and writing so many songs, and then having so many choices in the yeah. studio in real time, or even after the fact, what you can do. Uh, yeah. How do you edit that? How do you know, like, yeah, from the do. demo to the yeah. final product, how much it's has it changed? Think. Is it yeah. just you just, just feel it? Of, well, I mean, the speakers are not lying. These demos in, in particular were pretty flushed. Really? And I okay. tend to do that. Um, yeah. There's a couple albums where I didn't do it intentionally. Like, let's leave them so there's a little more zip on the first. What would that album be? But, but for the Sun was like that. Uh -huh. We kept the demos very sparse. And then people kind of brought what they wanted to bring in. and um, they, they still do that. Yeah. Um, but it's a, but, but, I, yeah, I, and I honestly just think it's about. Uh, me being impatient and, and if I have some time on my hands, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push the song further down the track. Let me see if I can, what, what if I try this? What if I try that? Mm -hmm. And then certainly was what Nick was gonna come on board and I was sending him stuff. You, and he's, he comes at, I don't know how he does it, but he, he comes at music from a very different place. He'll have ideas that, that I've never thought of. And then that's the as, point, right? As yeah. It's like halfway out of his mouth. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's why. You because I never, yeah, I never would have thought of that. Like, take that whole outro thing and put it in the beginning. Think, yeah, why not? Whoa. We can do that. And if you don't like it, you can and put it at the end again. And then, yeah. you know, as he's saying it and you're picturing it, you're like, dude, just like unlock the whole thing. Like that, <laughs> of course, 
you know, like how, how could I not? Um, but yeah, so anyway, yeah, the, all the demos and stuff are pretty flushed. Even solos and stuff like that, or you just have yeah. a few ideas? Well, de depending on the kind of solo it's going to be. If it's something where it's more of a, a part, you know. Oh, more something more lyrical. Something, and, yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, I I'm not going to stray too far from it. And sometimes I'll even use the demo solo if it's, if it's killer. So you went to Berkeley. Yeah. Was that kind of poo pooed when you went there? It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to play the blues. It was a kind of looked at uh, like, not no. so much. I don't no. think anybody really cared. No. Um, no, when I, when, and I was heavy into it at that point. I was into, I was into folk and, and finger picking and um, acoustic. And if I was playing electric, I was playing bluesy stuff. And then I started really getting into Steve Morse and Eric Johnson and stuff like that. Bri Brian, Brian turned me on to a lot of stuff. That's pretty late in the game to get into guys like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't play with a pick. Really? You so were off? Brian was the one who sort of got me hip to it. Do you ever, even playing live, do you ever go, I'm just going to use my fingers and, and if I drop a pick, I yeah, can get away? Or is it, time. it's a different feel. I, yeah, it's a last night. I, I mean, I remember when I drop a pick because it, it happens. I don't, even, I don't even throw them out until the end of the show because I'm like, I'll, I might use need the, this. <laughs> I'll use the same pick from, from warming up. Yeah. I'll use that one in the show. Okay. And that's kind of how it's always been my... I don't like them too fresh, and yeah. I don't like them too beat up. I like them just right. <laughs> it's that makes not sense. Bad. Yeah. Um, well, it's not that bad. And then at the end, I'll be like, okay, there you go. Yeah, hit someone in the eye with it. <laughs> but no, I, yeah, and I dumped one. Uh, I, yeah, I can remember the moment. But I dumped one on stage, and I, I could see it, and I was like, gah. It's over like, there. Going off the mic stand, I guess I'll use a new one. Uh, <laughs> And everyone could tell, I'm sure, it sounded completely well, different. Well, no, all the guitar nerds yeah. in the front could. Did he use a new pick? <laughs> all the guitar nerds <laughs> in the front. Is that all these guys? Like the guys there watching yeah, yeah. all, Oh, he just hit a distortion. Oh! <laughs> I love guys. that that happens to you, too, because I play gigs of oh, about yeah. nine people showing up. But it's always... Yeah, yeah. All big time. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. suck. Which I do. I was, yeah, I don't need them to... I, I was that guy, you know? Are you still that guy? Do you ever stand on the side of the stage and try and get other players to, like, you know, mess up? Uh, no. Play <laughs> mess no, up. No, no. You don't give them like a weird no. look or anything. No, we were at, we were at um, in Boston the other night, mm -hmm. and uh, sort of just to the right of where I was standing, it was like I was like I remember seeing a Dixie Drag show there. Oh yeah, and like just being like I was that guy watching Steve, and now some other guys doing that. Yeah. It's not quite the same thing. Over <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Steve Morse here. Did you ever get to meet Steve? Um. Uh, well. Not really, but sort of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. From because, far. I mean, yeah. Was well, it coming back he out He handed now. me his pick at the end of it. He was just like... Were you like a giddy little... Were you like, oh my God. Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, I just like knowing that you were that a, I, I had, had, a, I had a ring case. Yeah. Okay. I put the pick in it. <laughs> All right, that's a little far. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm yeah, uncomfortable. I don't know where that took is Took a now, lock of his hair. <laughs> <laughs> he just standing by. Like, he won't miss this. <laughs> I think they're back out on the road, though. I think the dregs are the dregs? They're playing again. Oh, yeah, he's out man. of Deep Purple, and I think, I, think, I think he's playing. We were talking about how cinematic some of the songs are. Like, when I hear certain songs of yours... Melody and sound. Yeah, there's, or, or, you know, so clear. Like, yep. to me, that it sounds like a movie. I don't know why I, I can't cinematic. describe it, and there's no video for it, as far as I know. There's a vibe to that production. It transcends just the notes that are being played. Are you going in, were you trying to evoke a mood? Or? Yeah, well, big time. I think that's an important thing that doesn't get... I totally doesn't agree. get the spotlight shone on it enough. Yeah. And I'm not saying that we're doing it right. or it, I just it's something well, it's, that I'm... It's definitely of, there. And something that I'm trying to do is, like, with every... Every building block of a song, and you know, right down to how the hi hats sound, mm -hmm. how the as opposed to like well, a lot of records are made now. It's just like you go into the studio, hammer out the song, sounds good enough, fix it in the mix. Let's hit it. And, I'm, yeah. and I, I, you know, I really still believe that all the all the elements make up. You know, even in our digital age, there's there's like what makes certain things feel a certain way, and it's not just you know, because he's singing a G over a C chord, mm -hmm. and it sounds like... Let's get really bass. clinical about it, yeah. But it's not just that. There's like, well, why does that acoustic guitar pull this thing out of me when I hear that? And it's not just because of the, these chords that he's playing. That's, that's not to question it. If it, if it makes the, you feel that way. There's, there's the mic, and there's the room that he was in. There's all those little things, I yep. think. Not only, they add up. Not only, yeah, and... and they add up to the to the person like when Dave's putting his bass down. It's like if he's playing to 
click, 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 and you know, or if he's Boring. playing to something that's that that is already have the, has the intention of wherever we're thinking it should go, mm-hmm. it's going to elicit different things out of and me too as a player and everybody. And I I try to focus on that, like the sort of my cheap basement version of doing that with the demo. Mm-hmm. Like here's kind of what I'm going for. Well, some of the bass lines, too, they really add, like, it's like a Paul McCartney thing. It's like, they can be busy, but they totally serve the song. Right. It's not just boring yeah. eighth notes. Like, those, there's melodies in there that you, you hear it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it, you would miss it if it wasn't there. Well, you know what you. I mean? <laughs> oh, for sure. Absolutely. Like, I think of, like, like Speedy Recovery, some of the lines yeah. in there. Or, um, is that, yeah. He came up, oh, yeah, that. I, I, but see, I love that. That I mean, one that's took one of me my so favorites. long to figure out, to get. We tried oh, that so, song on like three rhythm, albums yeah. before I could yeah. actually play. It. <laughs> really? So, well, I can't. I'm not. I'm not a pick guy. I was. Uh, I was always a finger guy. Okay. And he. He's like, to do this bass line, 150 BPM, 16th notes, yeah, and he played it. with a pick. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. We tried it on the fir- on Albatross. Couldn't do it. Tried it again. Another point. Then we tried it again, and I still couldn't get it on uh, on Gray Street. And then I think I went home and I pulled an all nighter. Yeah. Really? And I just came in the next day. I was like, I was a mess. And I'm just like, just give me one more shot at it, guys. And I did it. <laughs> You're I was like, okay. in your own filth. Yeah, yeah. totally. Sometimes that's there. Yeah. You need that. And then, we, yeah. and then when we got out west to, to Garth, Garth Richardson produced that. When we got out west. On top of a mountain, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. He was like, I was like, Garth, you got Taurus pedals here? You have what? Taurus pedals? You got Taurus pedals here? Oh, the old Taurus like, oh, yeah. pedals, yeah. <laughs> I started doubling all the bass lines. Oh, with really? With How your nice hands out? Yeah. Your, yeah. <laughs> Did you appreciate that? Was that a good feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Like, Let me just get in here for a second. Let's get the bass off here. <laughs> this slide thing is that, uh, like taking years off Dave's life. Oh, I'm sorry I mentioned it. I love so that good, song. It's so good, but let's make it, it even fatter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, the, and the hi-hat in that, too, is very stupid. Like, the whole yeah. rhythm. Like, you could take everything away. And that rhythm section on that song particularly always kills me yeah like i've always liked i've always liked that tune and you know i think it's, it's nice that you guys are into because oh, yeah. I, deep I, cuts, you know man. yeah deep cuts deep it's cuts. like that's kind of absolutely that's the stuff you don't play that live you should play that live we play haven't it. played it live in I want years long. would you do that for like me? dave dave's like no 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 <laughs> he's like, Damn maybe next run we'll we have some tourist pedals <laughs> <in the> back, <laughs> you know bringing melody and then that's another thing we talked about it, it's easy like your slide playing we were talking about which has evolved. I mean, I think uh, like on the first album or two, it's it's bluesier. It's yeah. probably more uh, of that ilk. And then now it's just very lyrical. There's some Celtic vibes. There's other yeah. things. How do you play slide and not end up sounding like you know Dwayne Ullman or somebody else? Where you kind of your identity on there I don't, is different. I think is the trick. I don't know. I spent. Uh, I spent. Uh, no, I I don't play slide. I think is is the trick. And right. I'm being quite honest. Like okay. I, I spent a long time. I think right. Right as I was getting out of college, I spent a lot of time just on the couch, just just honing in and just ingesting and, and listening. And, you know, some of it sort of came quick. Some of it didn't come so quick. Mm. But but I did. I, I was like and that at that time for I, I don't know how many months. But at that time, I was like, oh, I'm going to be a slide guy. You're just going to dedicate yourself. Yeah, to, yeah. Gonna, because I loved it so much. And there's mm-hmm. so many players and. You know, some of them sound so similar, but they all sound unique. You, it's hard to sound like somebody else on a slide. You just can't. Um, you can cop licks, you can cop things, but it's the thing about slide is it's so vocal, so lyrical mm. that a vibrato is never the same way twice. They like those those little things, that nuances. Is, is, is yeah, there's and depending on how dialed in you are to listening, to sure, they're supposed to go ah, slide. Sounds like blues. Well, right. that's but if what you're, I'm, yeah. if you're really honed in, how do you get away from that? Well, be, by really honing in yeah. and listening to Vishwa Mo and Bot and like crazy guys who do things that I don't are know who that is you know unimaginable yeah. is it Indian Indian oh. classical Indian oh yeah unbelievable that guy. <laughs> yeah he did a, a record called The Meeting by the River with him and Rad Cooter oh wow and I realized check this out there's a song on uh, oh what what record is it I think it's on Ghost but there's a <laughs> there's a lick. There's a lick in the song that is a direct lift from that. Are you going to tell us what it is? Or we have to go hunting for it? Anybody that's interested, that interested, go hunting for it. But it's one of those sort of subconscious lifts, you know? It's just like, I, I was the intro to the song. The, the song was fine without this thing. But I was like, God, what if we just had this sort of really lyrical, 
Dave, do you know what and it is? And I had this. I have no idea. Uh, you no, know, I just discovered it recently. Yeah, this is, this is all news to me. This is this subconsciously, is, even. That you no, yeah, no. That. It was just after the fact that I went and re revisited that record. And I, was like, I ripped I that off. I, and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone going to know? Yeah, well, they will now. Yeah, well, nine people bought but, that album. Yeah, and I don't remember reading a reading a, an interview with Ry Cooter about that album. Yeah. And it was, it was called A Meeting by the River, so mm. it's him and his son. And then I think three or four of these classically trained Indian guys, mm -hmm. not classical music, like Western class, like right. Indian class, like these right. guys. A lot of semitones and next level. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and Ry Cooter's like, He's he was, he was just like, but dude, it was like, those guys were like going for a walk in the yard. Like, mm -hmm. It was nothing for them. And he's like, I was doing everything I could to try and keep up with this guy. That's saying something, because I mean, <laughs> it's, it's right, it's right. Yeah. you know, yeah. And all that stuff, and it all, you know, it all comes back around. And I, I love it. I love playing slide. Why don't we get back into the, you know, even just talking about the product you're working on right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was your headspace? Kind of what were you going into, directionally speaking, when you were entering in there from any any angle? I think just where whatever wherever we got to with the the sevens. I just pushing that a little further because Ryan said you were like I mean you had like this I didn't say runway that. Uh, different Ryan sorry oh, my bad all this runway that you were just had so much going on that they just let you cut cut loose I don't know I just sort of hit a writing wise I sort of hit a hit a wave and I, you know that's how it is like sometimes you write a lot sometimes you write a little but you have to keep writing um, and some of it's shit and some of it's okay right. but I you that's know true. a lot of it gets thrown away. And, and these guys never hear it, but uh, you know, I'll go through a sort of a song a day kind of trip uh -huh. for a little bit and it'll we'll slow down and then we'll, it's back up. And, yeah. It's rare that there's nothing to do. Sure. So, you know, my hands kind of suffer when I'm, when I'm in that mode because I'm just, I'm not working out. Yep. <laughs> and I'm at the stage now where I need to work out well, consistently yeah. to keep it. Yeah. at a certain level but are you stockpiling yeah. this stuff like i mean as far yeah. as like oh, yeah. even like the stuff no it doesn't it's make just, it if there's a if there's if when i'm just working on my hands i'm not writing yeah if i stumble over something then i'm just gonna i'll just grab my phone and document it yeah and just just a little seed just do you ever a little go through something. a dry spell and just allow it to like do you ever just go man i got nothing i'm just gonna all the time yeah and then i and just, other ways and then i just look through i'll just look through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of little seedlings right until something, I go, oh, what's what was that? Yeah, yeah. And then I'll have to listen to it. What, what is that tuning or whatever it is? Yeah. And and and, and then it just it starts like that. And then you and Pieces then you're together. off to the races. And yeah. then and then it's each step. If if it keeps opening up more and more, and it's like I can hear where this is going to go. I can hear where this. And, you know, it's rare that, I, but it does happen where you're just sitting there and something goes. And just falls. So oh, I know that feeling from the right. sky. In right. Talk about music, right? Yeah. Okay. No, and you just get a whole song. Yeah. At once, you can almost hear it done before you're even finished playing it for the first time. You know exactly. And you have to rush to get that down, like you know, I, before I forget. Yeah. Yeah. Used to be. Now it's just like phone. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know it does happen, and those are usually the best or your favorites. You're not it's one of those guys. You're not playing guitar it's in more the park. Of a head down, yeah. like just hacking away toiling away or yeah. something that that i'm like ooh, you know and, and then it's like what if it was acoustics by a river you know and i have right, that right, image right. and i'm like oh, okay and you have like a falcon on your shoulder <laughs> 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 try that next time but when i can't think of anything it's usually you know get some birds involved and it's, it's happening um i was listening to this in the car on the way here so i have to ask hey, man. what is a pocketbook brando i don't know was it just a cool lyric a couple words yeah I get to keep in mind, man, I'm like 22 or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Too cool for the room. Yeah, but not cool at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but no, I, I think in my head, the idea was that it was, you know, that it was uh, just sort of putting on a face around certain people. Okay. But not doing a very good job of it. And no one asked you like, hey, man, what, what do you mean by that? You know, you just, they just said that. Screw no, it. That's the it, lyrics. People, it gets it gets referenced all the time. It, you know, I, I don't consider like there's some heavyweight lyric, lyric writers mm. that I admire. And I would never even dream of, you know, I mean, I can't Aping do that. that. That's a different, you know, I play guitars, man. You know, I'm that dude. I, yeah. I'll default to that. But every once in a while, I'll stumble over something that's pretty good. Yeah, you're like, I'll, I'll use that. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know. Do the lyrics come I last? I'm proud of those. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, mostly, mostly. I'd say like 85, 90 percent of the time, it's 
lyrics to last, but I'll have a pretty good idea where it's going. I have one one of these 18 songs where I have no idea. And it comes with you chasing, right? It's, it's that always. chase that's always a part of it. It's whether you're a guitarist and you're chasing the tone, you're chasing the sounds. It seems like guitarists were always never happy with the pedal boards. If you're a pedal guy, it's like, ah, oh, we always chase the next thing. Songwriting-wise, band-wise, I, I think that's a major component of what yeah. keeps you guys doing yeah. what you do and, and to the level that you're doing it. It is. It is. It's always, there's always something, and that's all, it's, it's always when you least expect it, you know, you'll find inspiration somewhere. Yeah. We're very lucky because we're in this position that we don't, we, we don't have to force it. You yeah. Know? There's no, and I, and I've seen that and I've felt that I've done it and it sucks. I mean, it's just like, this doesn't really work, but I'm just going to force it in there. Right. Yeah. You know, Unnatural. And, and it's like, if it's something, I'm forcing something and it, just put it away. I'll get back to it. Like, there's a lot of songs that, that we have that have just been recycled from a little riff here, an idea there from, I don't, they're not on a timeline. Mm -hmm. They're, they're just, they're just not in a recorded song yet. I will find something that I've always dug about something that we used to jam on and could never f finish it or never find a, like, what, well, why, what was it about that that, I, you know, and then just me just going back and replaying that old riff all of a sudden something opens up right i'm like oh there it is yeah the light goes off 20 years and two minutes to write you sure. know i think we're in a, we're in a, we're in a very unique position where probably a lot of bands could take any one of us and and put us in their band and you know right and probably you know way more successful than we are um but i just think there's something great about yeah that, that we call this home base. I mean, it's something you're compelled to do. It's something you want to do. Even if yeah. you weren't successful at it, you'd still want to do it. To have that measure of satisfaction that you get to do that. Yeah. I mean, that's the goal, right? You don't have to worry about selling it is, at the enormous. It is, and, and that's sort of, a, you know, that's sort of been, I think, our true north since since the Albatross record. Again, yeah, there was a shift there for oh, me as a fan. I, yeah, I, I hear I couldn't was, put my finger on there it. Was, there was a shift for us, too. Yeah. It was like the birds being let out of the cage, and then that... Uh, and it, and then it was, it was certainly gratifying. It was like that was the, our first number one with Albatross. Mm -hmm. That's a song crazy, that yeah. I would never have even thought to. That song almost didn't make the record. Yeah, really, really. Yeah, yeah, that was that was, was like, a. Eh. <laughs> yeah, you were kind of. And then Nick was like, "Oh no 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 no, we're doing this one." On yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, what if we started with this guitar intro? Yeah, yeah. that was another Nick idea. He's like, "What are you going to start with the guitar intro?" And that, I think the demo was like the and then I started singing, and then we do the song. Right. And Nick's like, "No no no no, you're going to start with that, that slide part, and we're going to go right into a chorus with no vocals." I was like, oh, "I know what you're doing. Oh my god, that's so good!" <laughs> like I just heard it already in my head, you know. Well, it's it tough to I do. Was like, that's going to work, and it's going to work so well. And then the drums come in, ah, and then the drums go out, and then you start singing. I was like, dude, <laughs> you're just rolling out the red carpet for the vocal. Like, well, who thinks of that? <laughs> like, you know, that's why he's that guy. And, and, and it's like, I don't know. I think he listens to a lot of Rush and stuff like that. So he, who doesn't? Yeah. Well, there's plenty he of did people. snakes and arrows and yeah, mm -hmm. but he's I, I think another one he, too. I can't he remember. He wanted what. that gig because he's such a big fan. So. Yeah, mm. well, I'll say that we're incredibly <clears throat> excited to see what comes of this All this right. next album in the future. Right. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to head on out here and hang with us for a bit. Nice, yeah. Absolutely, nice to finally make it. Too. Absolutely, yeah. oh, that's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah. People love Mawa in early June. It's just <laughs> check this out. Is yeah. this the same Mawa from Johnny Ninety Nine? It's got to be right. Yes. And Les Paul lived around here too. The yeah, Les Paul, yeah, at yeah, least not far. Yeah, he was like, "What's in Mawa?" And I just started singing Johnny Ninety Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, and a big thank you to Ian and Dave of Big Rec for stopping by. Be sure to check out their new EP, Pages, coming out November twenty fourth. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this.